Hey guys, Shane Simmons here coming at you with another interview that we did a couple years ago with a lady named Thelma Klein in Dayton, Virginia. Her original destination was canceled at the very last minute. Actually, we were on the road and we found out that we weren't going to be able to go where we wanted to go. So we ended up going to the Dayton Museum and Thelma was gracious enough to tell us a little bit about her life story. And I think you'll really enjoy this. She mentions a few things that I know uh, bring back a lot of memories for a lot of folks about um, their dads working in the mines and bringing dinner buckets home and saving some food for them. I, I don't know how many times I've heard that. And, and you know, those guys work so hard and for uh, long hours and you know, they would have loved to eat and everything in that bucket, but they always save something special back for the kids. So I really love that piece of this, but, and there's a lot more in here that I think you'll really like. And I think I need to, speaking of, I need to scrooge up here. It looks like my daughter's taking over my house. Sorry about that. but. Without further ado, we'll uh, let you watch this video with uh, Thelma Klein in Dayton, Virginia. Thanks. Try talking to my niece, my sister been sick and she's harassing. She's from, originally from New York, lived there for years and trying to understand what she says. <laughs> All right, I'm, uh, I'm rolling, so just forget I'm even here. You can talk to that gentleman and he's gonna ask you a few questions. I'm gonna hit you the real hardball one. What's your name? Thelma Klein. Thelma Klein. Um, now you were talking about, you were born and raised in Dayton? Born in 1939 here in Dayton. And uh, tell a little bit about your childhood. You, you said your dad worked in the mines? Yes, my dad worked in the 53 mine up Bearwall that way. He used to have to walk up the mountain to work. And I can remember meeting him as he came in from work. He had a dinner bucket about this tall, and he'd always bring me part of his dinner back. <laughs> and I'd run and meet him. That's that specialty. He always saved you something? He always saved me something. <laughs> but that was a treasure, wasn't it? It was. And it, they didn't have that much. I didn't realize that then. but. <laughs> What was, what was life like when your child was, was it a happy childhood? Or? Oh yes, we had, we were poor, but we didn't know it because everybody else was poor around us. We always had plenty to eat. That's one thing I can remember. Even my brothers, they uh, used to be migrant farmers before they came here. And my brothers said they always had plenty to eat because they raised a big garden and canned stuff. Your dad um, said he, uh, I guess he had to go to work sick and all kinds of stuff, didn't he? Mm-hmm. Got any stories about him? You say he had asthma, maybe? He had asthma really bad, black lung. And, but he worked every day he could. And they didn't make much. Like I said, he loaded coal in them tra cars for $2 a day sometimes. And he said he had worked for a dollar a day. Wow. Now, how many people lived in Dayton back then? Do you remember? There were several thousand, but I can't remember how many. And a lot of people think when they think about this area, they think just poor white people. Mm -hmm. and it was a whole different story back then. Right? Oh, yes, because there were crowds of people. The store was always full every day. They had a bus that ran every hour during the week and every 30 minutes on Saturday because there wasn't very few cars. And it was straight holler, bear waller, cigarette holler, trammel. They come from everywhere and they were crowds of them. Because most of the houses are gone now, you wouldn't know it to look at it now. What type of people lived here? Was there, uh, you said from other countries? Yeah, there was a lot of people from other countries. They were Hungarians, Romanians. Uh, I can't remember what all, but there was several. We've had several that live, still live here. Uh, the Hontos, the Tompas. Of course, some of them are dead now, but some of their families still live here. Did people get along back then, or was there any oh, problems? Oh, yes. Everybody helped each other. They, they helped their neighbors. And like I was talking about, my, uh, the people right above us were the first to lose a soldier in the war. And when that happened, everybody gathered around them and helped them, you know. If somebody was sick, all the women in the neighborhood went in and cooked and helped clean the house or whatever needed to be done. I can remember my mother had a nervous breakdown one time and, and they came in and did all the work and took care of mommy. We were talking about those mine disasters and, and when people, when, when I guess they, 
was it an explosion or what happened with that? Uh -huh, an explosion. Now that one, I can't remember that one there, but the one that I remember it was a mine explosion and one guy I know lost his leg and one got his ears burned. I, I don't know how many were killed, but it was a bad one. What, what, what happened here when people would hear about an explosion like that? What, I mean, I'm sure just everybody was all pieces, weren't they? Oh, everybody, because most everybody had family in the mines and it would scare them to death nearly. I remember one night I was leaving church a few years ago and all the sirens started going off. Fire trucks and everything were going up towards the mining area. And we thought there'd been a mine accident, but it wasn't. It was a woman's car, the gas pedal and brake stuck, and she went over the mountain, and her car was hanging like that. But we all thought it was another mine accident. I'm sure that just terrifies you when you hear that. And when I worked for Clinchfield for the engineering department, we had have somebody at the radio at all times because you never knew when something would happen, they'd have to have somebody there immediately. So Clinchfield, it was the biggest one around here, wasn't mm -hmm. it? How, how many people did it employ? Do you... Oh gracious, it was hundreds here. Just in my department, I was secretary to the engineering, the brush cutters, the repair crew, and I don't know, the electrical crew, and they was over a hundred in that, those departments. Wow. When did the population start dropping around here? I'd say about 55, something like that. Do you know what caused it? Well, they shut down a lot of the mines and people had to go elsewhere to get jobs. Well, it's for that because my brother-in-law left here, I guess, probably about 50, 49, 50. My brother-in-law, uh, my brothers went in service right off the bat when they got out of school. That's what most of the young boys did. They went in service then. I guess it's sad when, when somebody moved away because it's a small town. It probably I mean, it kind of hurt you, doesn't it, especially if it's family? Yeah, it affected everybody because we were all close friends, you know. We knew everybody. I was uh, writing up a list of people that used to live from the top of Hazel Mountain down to Dane. And I had five and a half pages of names that had lived up there. Have you been able to reconnect with any of those people now, or it's just kind of just gone? Well, a lot of them are dead, but a lot of them I still keep up with a lot of their families. We have a reunion here on August the 8th, and a lot of them come in for that. If you, uh, just, coal was everything here, wasn't it? That's all we had was coal. Well, how do you feel about it now? you think it's a good thing or a bad thing? Oh, I think it's great. And I still think it's great because if they do away with coal, our power bills are going to shoot sky high. Yeah, if, if they put coal on the selection ballot, what kind of percentage do you think would vote for it? Well, here, I'd say the biggest part of the people would, if they've got any smarts at all. <laughs> Uh, even though, I mean, you hear about the environment and that kind of stuff, but, uh, you know, mining is, that's where the jobs and everything mm -hmm. else came from. And all, so. Yeah, that's what, I've experienced that a lot, too. A lot of people feel the exact same way. It's just, um, they, as much as vilified other places, coal mining is still king here. <laughs> it's still king here. And that's why so many people are moving away. And a lot of people are moving back here from the cities because they can't afford where they used to live. When they retire, they can't afford to live in the city, so they're moving back in this area. A lot of these coal camps, uh, you know, some houses are nice and some are falling in. Mm -hmm. What do you think that's going to be like 50 years from now? Well, it's, I'd say when the retirees now are gone, most of the houses will go down because most of the young people don't try. Well, what, 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 what do you think that, that is? I think a lot of the government, if they didn't hand them a check, if they hand them a job instead of a check, and food stamps, they'd be a lot better off, don't get me wrong, that's good when they can't eat, work. But a lot of them are able to work and won't. They get hooked on drugs and stuff, and our area is full of it. Yeah, my hometown is too, exact same thing. I mean, it's just, we see that a lot. Now, what, what the people that still live here, they, uh, I know there's a lot of uh, nostalgia and affection for the place, and there's a lot of people still come back that moved away. Do you see a lot of people? Mm -hmm. 
Now they come back to the reunion or come back to visit family, and a lot of them come in here, you know, and visit. That's good. That's about all I can think. Is there anything else you wanted to say about uh, Daint or coal mining? Well, I enjoyed working for the coal company. I worked there for 20 some years, and I had a good life. I worked, I earned my money, but, but I, I didn't ask for nothing except what I, did, you know, worked for. And that, I think that's what's wrong with the world today. People expect a lot of them, like when they got laid off, they were angry with the coal company. But they had to do what they had to do too. And if the coal company, if the workers don't work, they can't keep the mines going. That's, uh, that's what I see a lot too. If funny people think that the mines, should, the coal company should have done more than they could have. Mm -hmm. You know, they built the houses and they did all that, but they went broke. None of them were around either. <laughs> no, but if they didn't have enough for a crew, they couldn't work that day and they, they lose money. Did any of your family, your dad or did anybody in your family get affected by layoffs or strikes or anything like that? Well, my husband was in on the, the last strike. The Pittston? Mm-hmm, about the pensions and stuff. How, how, did, how was that? Is that I mean, I'm, it that, was rough. <laughs> it kind of turned some people against each other, didn't it? It did. But now I worked right over there at the office and a lot of people got jack rocked and everything, but I never did get one because they knew how I felt. And I never got, they broke in cars and got their CB radios. And I left mine open, nobody ever bothered it. They, they kind of knew who to. Mm -hmm. They who knew. To they hear it, listen to them talking. But all in all, you, did you say you've got a pretty positive view of the coal company? Or depends? <laughs> I think the coal company did good by people. I mean, there's always a few bad eggs in every bunch, but I think they really did good for our area. Okay. And like I said, Walt Crickmer's doing the God Piles. He still helps a lot with dank. Is there anything you think could be better about around here? What, what do you think could make a difference to make it you know, uh, a better future? If they could get some kind of jobs in here, it would be great. And a, a little store down here, we always had a store. And now they can't even get bread without going miles. And most of them don't have vehicles or can't drive or something. And they have to go all the way to St. Paul to get, or Hanging Rock somewhere to get a loaf of bread or anything. Might have to cut for a minute. It's too cold in here. I think that's a good spot on you. Yeah. Come on, man. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. You're fine. You'll be good in the filming. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Uh, I wish you'd have been up there instead of me. Your knees might be knocking instead of mine. <laughs> no. Hi there. How are you? Doing fine. We're from Atlanta. From and we're working Atlanta. right down the road and we wanted to stop by real quick. Yeah. We're ordering our lunch Hi. break. Hi. Help yourself. Hello. Hello. I'm Carl Gray. Selma Klein. Selma, nice oh, to meet you. Been in Dane all my, my life. My name's Taryn. <laughs> Karen. Nice to meet you. <laughs> This is Irene. Eileen. Irene Lewis. Irene. Irene. Yeah. Hi there. My name's Taryn. Oh, nice Taryn to meet you. Hi, friend. How are you? 